Welcome back to the Sacred Seat Podcast. My name is Melanie and I am joined by my lovely friend, Alana. We're diving into the conversation around integration. It's a hot topic lately and there's a lot to cover. This is something that I think both Alana and I are very passionate about and is a pillar of Alchemia's structure. Hi, yeah, no, I'm looking forward to diving into this topic. I think it's really uh, relevant right now, and there's so much more nuance and so many more layers to it than um, we would ever think just by the word integration itself. Oh, for sure. Yeah, to integrate, to make, how would you, when I think of the word integration and then my process around what that has come to mean to me, because that has changed over the years, and it is, I think, ever evolving as I evolve on my own journey, but integration for me, just to, it feels like making it mine, to make it one, making the new knowledge, making wisdom, making a plant medicine journey or an insight I got in therapy or through a breathwork session. It's making that newly discovered emotion or perspective or thing mine. It feels like claiming it, like bringing it inside of me and then living through it making one. And I think, <laughs> I think that that's a massive thing to try and label, especially when people are looking for a quick fix, i.e. a how to integrate guide. Absolutely. Like how do you, it's, it's just such an individual process. Like you said, making something yours is different from person to person. And yeah, I love that. Like you use the word like knowledge and wisdom. And I feel like that is kind of what it is. It's like you're, 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 you're bringing some concept that you now maybe have become aware of. So you have a subconscious pattern, maybe plant medicine or your breath work or um, some other form of spiritual, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> spiritual practice maybe brings you some sort of revelation and then you know you that's the opening so that's the beginning and then we have to you know bring that into our body into our being and and yeah like make it yours and transform it into um your new norm like your new foundation like we're making it's almost like you're making changes ideally grounding it into the physical realm from this like etherical idea really right and that's where the stickiness comes because the 3d realm is dense and there's so many different patterns that are interwoven into it and everybody's wounding everybody's childhood everybody's patterning um every being is just different so it can't be like this how to this is the steps that you do like a a mental concept like that it's it's much uh, more multi-dimensional than that that's why i think we can see the concept and the necessity of integration really shaking up the online space right now especially within spiritual communities because we're not used to having to move through discussions or processes 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 <laughs> on multiple <laughs> realms at the same time right like i think we're really comfortable as a society as humans in general making it make sense in our minds right getting that mental construct of this is how it works in the 3d and we're going to do x y and z and we're going to get this because it's predictable because it's achievable it's mappable when we're talking about integration most of the integration doesn't occur solely in our mental realms solely in our minds it involves integrating into our body which i think as a society especially in western culture we're really disconnected from our emotions our emotions if i had to rank them on the ones that were the best <laughs> at starting to discuss i think um our generation the generation before has done a lot of work about giving words and constructs and structure to the emotional realm that wasn't there before but we're still, I think, discovering and feeling out that spiritual, soulful dynamic of being human. And integration for me is heavily occurring in that realm. It's, it's shifting and moving my physical patterns and my emotional patterns and my mental patterns to better align me with the lessons that my soul has made wisdom. And to bring that into a process and then out into the world through me is ineffable, which is why this conversation, I think, is really disturbing or causing a lot of conflict in the spiritual space, because it's not something that can be clearly taught, which is what we're really, I think, used to looking for. Some kind of outside authority, some teacher, some guru, some person to show us how to do X, Y, and Z. And integration 
flips that onus and puts it back on you. It's like, this is a true journey of internal reflection, self-discovery and personal responsibility. That's how I think I have begun to unravel the concept of integration and why it's been such a sticky topic, especially in the community at large. Oh, absolutely. It's like, it's funny because you look at social media, you look at that and you're seeing it all over the place, but we're trying to understand integration from the mind and the mind is where the blind spots lie, you know? So it's like, you're, you're, how, do, how do you see the, through the blind spots when you're trying to understand it from that place? And so it's like, I think that you nailed it as far as like that emotional piece, I think is really key. And I think it has been for this generation, like you said, and being able to really like feel uh, fully and not, not, not go to the mind to those coping mechanisms that we create to not have to feel because we're afraid of feeling because we're not sure what that feeling is going to do because we've, we've never understood really, right? So to keep coming back into the body and, and feeling and trusting and, um, and, and coming into that beingness is such an important concept in integration that is like, is hard to really even mentally conceptualize you know like and it's it's probably sounds a bit like a broken record to people who are only living from the mind they're like oh yeah yeah like be in the moment mm -hmm. sure yeah of course you know like i've heard that before so but it is like it's um to drive home that that uh concept is is honestly for me has been one of the biggest uh pieces of of my integration process it's like you know i can i can try and think it's something else and oh no it always brings me back to that so yeah mm -hmm yeah without a doubt it's such a internal process and it's hard when you are either living in the mind or just not used of having your attention and intention inward facing and viewing what comes up for you as your own authority right and following your own internal path and like i've been that person who's been like oh my gosh so often like i have been that person who's like that's not helpful, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> Tell me how, like, make it make sense. And then um, it is like, it's feels like I'm being patronized by people out there on the internet. You're like, you just don't get it. You just got it. It would make sense. But um, <laughs> it's like, okay, great. Thank you. I clearly understand that I'm missing something. And there's that surrender piece, I think, that comes with, which plant medicine is a great teacher of, having to surrender and trust. But in integration is um, something that occurs across the board in our life experience, which I think is another reason why it's really hard to pin down and get a clear understanding of what it is. Because you can integrate something that you talk about with your therapist, or you can integrate a new fitness routine. I feel like it's extra hard because not only is the conversation of integration and what integration is and how to do it, not only is that piece a variable, but because this shows up in so many different areas of our lives, if we become good at integrating something intellectually, for example, if we're good at taking information and knowledge and making it our own and then utilizing it in our lives, that's one way that we integrate knowledge into wisdom. But that almost gets stuck in our mental realm and it doesn't become integrated through our entire being. There's like an emotional realm, there's a physical realm, there's other energetic bodies that the list is very long for all of the ways we exist in multiple realms simultaneously. So to have it apply to all areas of our lives and not be necessarily transferable, like how you integrate in your mind and your mental capacities is not how you integrate in the emotional sphere when you're trying to give yourself room to process feelings and to to move through the emotions that come up and it's whatever you utilize in that realm is not going to be exactly how you need to integrate that same teaching on a physical realm so there's so many layers i mean as with everything in life i'm coming to find but there's so many layers to integration that like i get it i get the frustration that's out there I have, I feel that frustration, not even past tense that comes up for me still, because I want to know how to do something right. Like I want to know how to move through something, but it's such a human concept of mine that there's a good and a bad way to do something, a right and a wrong way to integrate or a right and a wrong way to process or a right and a wrong way to feel. So it can become taxing and I think frustrating. And it's that frustration and that looking for something to alleviate that frustration that I see all over social media right now when people are attacking plant medicine ceremonies because 
people's lack of integration or inability to teach integrative practices or how there hasn't been an emphasis on integration in a lot of these spheres, people are starting to, I think, lash out because there's that build of that frustration of like, how do I do this right? Someone show me how to do it right. When we have to just revolutionize our entire framework of the work that we're doing and integrate that there's no right or wrong. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And how, how awful is it too that we're blaming plant medicine when it's like, no, like the person who's not doing the integration is the person sitting for the plant medicine. And, you know, that brings me back to integrity. It's just like, you know, like, you know, when you get uncomfortable enough, you will shift. So yeah, these people who haven't integrated are now seeking, they, they need to because, you know, their nervous systems are fried. They're, they are frustrated because now they understand the patterns, but they don't know how to work with them. They're overwhelmed. And so like, yeah, they're, they're seeking out support in ways to actually integrate this. And so I find finding those are the practitioners too that are out there that are really like, um, you know, speaking badly about plant spirit medicine, which is just the tool. It's not, you know, it's, it's how we're using it that the problem is. Um, and so like, and yeah, I mean, is it even a problem? You know, it's like, look, this is the next, this is the next obvious stage mm -hmm. in evolution for, for all of us as a collective is like, we all need to learn to integrate. And with that comes a total upgrading of all of our foundations. Like you said, it's so natural to just want to approach it from the mind and make it systematic and make it, oh, I just do this, this, and that, and the other thing. And that's and that framework has to break. That framework has to be the thing that shifts. And um, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a challenging, that's, a, you know, that's, how do you shift that really? Right. And it's just through, it's through coming back to yourself over and over and over again. Um, and, tr and trusting that, yeah, your inner wisdom is the right way. And that maybe one time you do some yoga to help yourself integrate and another time you're journaling and, and, you know, you might revisit those practices another time and it might not work for yoga and you have to do something else and, and to trust your mm -hmm. intuitive guidance and, and move in the directions that are going to, um, that feel guided to you and, and not guided necessarily by some guru online or somebody that says, this is good and this is bad. And this is that. And the other thing, you know, form your own opinions and your own, um, you know, your own framework to move through life. Uh, that's, I think, a lot of our calling these days. Well, it's that yes and piece too, right? Like, yes, sometimes, yes, you want it to be this step, this step, st this step, and this structure will help you. Yes. And there's the entire paradox about the fact that you can't stop yourself from feeling an emotion. And if you think you can, then that's just a whole other basket. But like, there's no, it, it, there's no linear laws in some of these other realms that we work with. So it's yes on this plane and no on that plane. And paradoxically, maybe sometimes over here, but not all the time over there. And I think it's funny because this conversation is really what I feel like I'm working on integrating right now. It's, it's getting used to that in between that liminal space, the liminal space in between being fully in my mental realm or my emotional body realm. And for me, I've been really trying to smooth out the transition period from when I put on what hat. And I think that's like, okay, I'm in my emotional feeling body and da, 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 da. it's not always conscious like this either. I'm not that advanced. <laughs> this is uh, usually a messy slip and slide between how am I responding and showing up in this moment, but trying to maneuver the different realms that I exist in and to make that transition period smoother so that I can hold more space for all of that to be true. Yes, if I do X, Y, and Z, it'll provide me the structure to do this and I'll figure this out. And in one sense, that makes great sense. But then also you step into that chaotic emotional realm and like sense really doesn't matter. <laughs> so maybe all that goes out of the window and to be okay with all of that, to be okay with both of those options. And then the totally ineffable spiritual aspect of integration where nothing makes sense until all of a sudden it makes sense and there's no right way to do anything and there's no one two three step and you're there it's just you're asleep and now you're awake and now you know and you didn't know what you didn't know and you can't know what you don't know and that's all simultaneously occurring and it's all simultaneously perfect and okay <laughs> totally that's actually why i love plant medicine for me it allows me to really connect to um to like zoom out and see the big picture of like, oh, look, I've got this, 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 this. And then what's the common thread between all these things that are happening simultaneously in my life. And then being able to like, you know, connect to those dots and uh, like pull on the thread and start to unravel it really. Right. Um, yeah. It's interesting. I love like how Richard Rudd talks about through the Venus sequence. He talks about how the emotional realm gives rise to the mental realm. 
And so he kind of talks about the emotional realm being like a geyser, like a flow of, of like a watery flow of energy within our being. And it's actually like the thought patterns that we create, the mental patterns that like creates the, the cap that, 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 that stifles that flow of, of emotional energy. And and so I kind of find that's, you know, like you can kind of utilize that to kind of, it's almost the opposite of the way we were taught. I feel like we're taught like thoughts create emotions and that's, you know, so change your thoughts, change your emotions. But what if it's like, you know, like stop thinking, and like allow the emotions to flow. And once you shifted that vibration, then the thought patterns will change, you know? So maybe there's, you know, and nobody's really gotten this figured out yet. I don't think there's one way. I think you can intervene at so many different levels of this and different, um, different aspects and, and, you know, enact change. And that comes back to that individuality piece to integration. But, you know, looking at things from different angles has always really been helpful to me. And plant medicine allows me to do that. It allows me to look at it from this angle and this angle and this angle. So I can really get that big picture. Um, and I find when you fully understand something and you fully accept it, then that like step into shifting it and fully integrating it into your body just seems easier. It's not like you're bumping up against like, okay, I'm trying to shift this, but then I'm coming up against this and I don't fully understand it. You kind of like get to, um, yeah, shift it with, with grace a little bit more maybe. And, and I'm not saying that it's always like that because it definitely isn't, but maybe a little bit more so than if I, if I had it. Well, and it makes me wonder if those situations when the dynamic doesn't shift with grace that stickiness is part of what needs to occur in order for it to shift at all. Right. And that comes into that trust bit for me is that like, if I'm feeling this way, there's something here to feel. It's not that I should have done it a different way or that if I did it this way I, and if I integrated right, or if I did two extra freaking juice cleanses, this would have been avoided. It's like again and again, the most sacred thing is what is. So if you are there, if you are feeling it, if you are not feeling it, if you are stuck, if it's not working, if it is working, if you feel like you're doing everything wrong in that moment, whatever is the most alive for you, that is exactly what is the most sacred. There is magic in that. And um, I think that's one of the biggest things that lets me take a deep breath and feel that like grace and that trust is that I have to, whatever is alive in this moment, there's no right or wrong way. There's no shoulds or shouldn'ts. There's no one path. It's just, I'm here and this is what I'm doing and I got to move through it. Yeah, no. And it's um kind of, it's funny, like when that brings you back to that same concept is like, oh, it's the mind. That's the one that's trying to understand. And it's like, no, you're right. Stepping into that trust and that like, oh, this is exactly where I am and what I need to feel and what I need to be. And and that we don't always need to utilize the mind to complete to understand what's happening in each moment and sometimes that understanding comes later and sometimes we don't have any understanding and things just shift and you just let something go and and you're a different person after you fully felt through something um because yeah it's it's i think a, like the most of the time if i go too much into the mind and try to over analyze something i think my mind just ends up projecting that feeling onto everything else around me like oh it's because my husband did this or it's because um i'm not doing good enough in this area and i need to try harder and it's like no like that's those are just you that's just your mind trying to project and, and try and figure out why you're feeling the way you're feeling when does it really matter this it's it's moving right now it's it's alive right now let's just feel it and and if you need to understand that will come later maybe well, and that's the beautiful gift of the mind. And I think this conversation that we're having right now is exactly why you see a lot of teachers or people who use their voices in the spiritual community. A lot of it can come across as they're condemning the mind or the mental realm or shaming the mental realm, or there's a lot of issue and a lot of potential attack on our mental realm. And it's because of the difficulties that we have using our minds as the tools that they are that a lot of I think that resentment and that bitterness towards our mental realms come from like look at our society like we have record high depression record high anxiety I mean the opioid epidemic the crises that are occurring a lot of those things are so deeply rooted in the mental realm it's clear that this is an area that as humanity we are working to understand to <sighs> manage, I don't want to say control, because I think it comes down to managing the mind as a tool that it is. And our minds are beautiful tools that allow us to move through the 3D world, but they're tools that recognize patterns. They're tools that utilize our survival instincts to find and address and label and categorize and process and, and 
uh, compartmentalize and dissect things. And that's not always the, when we don't control our minds, that gets applied to things that it doesn't need to be applied to. So for my pivots that I've been focusing on, that's been one of them is I will not condemn the mind, even though I do subtly often condemn my mind. Why am I here? Why am I stuck like this? Why is it this such a pattern? But what resisting the fact that that's what the mind does doesn't free you up from that dynamic of the mind. It's just making sure that my mind is in service to my soul, that this tool is here to serve my soul and um, my spirit, my heart, my whatever you want to talk about. But it's in service to my being and through my mind, I have an opportunity to interact with the 3D world. I can create ideas, imagine things, build things, have a conversation with you, use a computer. Minds are important. So it's, it's an ego trap that I've had to tiptoe myself around because I don't want to fall into that category of condemning my mind because it's a beautiful tool when it is in service. We've just created so much, we've given it so much power and and with that power you know it's it is like a computer and it is programmed from our childhood and it is programmed from our experiences and we rely on these neural pathways in our brain that we've created in order to exist in reality without having to have our attention be so fully on things so we create these automatic patterns and so it can be really challenging to slow those down enough to really see what's happening and make different choices it can be really um really just it, it's gritty like we already said you know it's gritty work but once we do that then we can allow like you said the mind and the other bodies the emotional bodies the spiritual body to start to work together and to create new patterns and new neural pathways that are in supportive of what your new wisdom has been given to you is in alignment with really right so that new wisdom um from your adult space, those things you're getting from, you know, your meditation, your spiritual practice, your plant medicine ceremonies, we can actually make the shifts that are long lasting for ourselves that actually, you know, become our new autopilot that you just do automatically. But with any new skill, like when you're learning a new skill as a child, like the first time you, I don't know, I used to sing growing up. So the first time I got on stage and sang was like, oh my God, that's the most scary thing ever. But you know, you, you keep doing it and you keep doing it and it gets easier and easier and easier. And then, you know, at, at some point it's just become second nature. And you, you can't even remember how much, ch how challenging it was to begin with. And that's like anytime you make any change in the mental realm. Um, so yeah, it's being willing to, to feel uncomfortable when you're making some new changes in, in, in patterns in your life and really integrating things. Integration, I think, is inherently a very like kind of uncomfortable in between place to be. And, and most people, you know, don't feel safe there. So I could see why people are maybe avoiding that. They're just looking for the love and the light. You know, they're seeking out plant medicine for the love and the light. They're seeking out um, meditation just for love and light. And they're totally missing that like, oh, we are also having to confront our shadows and the things that we avoid as well. Yeah, so much so. I think it's a broad umbrella term, integration. And within integration, for me, lies every single one of my spiritual practices. They're all integration. Every single, especially when you are someone who has journeyed with plant medicine or has been on some sort of spiritual path for a while, you start to view your life like a ceremony and everything becomes a teaching. And when you are constantly in communion with the universe that way, when you are looking for guidance and you're being pivoted and you're trying to be in flow and you're syncing up and attuning to that kind of way of moving in the world, there are things to integrate continuously. And it just becomes a way of living to try and provide self myself with space, try to provide myself with time, consideration, and grace while I blindly bump my way through the human experience. Um, but integration is such a broad category because within that, for me, integrating means the three days in a row where I don't get out of bed and I watch child cartoons because I'm sad. <laughs> because uh, I did inner child work and a little baby Melanie is just processing and wants to feel safe. So she watches Indiana Jones on repeat or the mummy series. Like I have comfort movies for this reason. <laughs> totally. Um, but like that can be under the category of integration and it looks 
so different for different people. That's why this conversation, I think, is really important to have. And I also think this is the, the reason this conversation pisses a lot of people off, especially, again, in our society. Like you said, we are programmed by our parents, by our peers, by our the president, by the prime minister, by the, the news we see, by literally teachers, priests, pastors, pick a thing, and there ha they have input into the way we move. And then we have a collective zeitgeist that we are also contending with. Like, it's not only ourselves that we have to break patterns within. Sometimes we're going against generational oomph. We're going against societal oomph. And when it comes to integration, you're called to do things that go against the grain of a lot of energies that are deeply ingrained for the world at large. If you are going to be really intentional about the food you eat, this is a really easy example. You start asking, okay, where are my eggs from? Simple question, where are my eggs from? It leads you down how many tangents and all of a sudden you're homesteading. You don't buy any cheese or dairy <laughs> in the, in the store. You, you can't, you can't get that chicken because they use hormones and these person, like it, there's just, it's inevitable that the micro and the macro interact in that, in that level. And if you try and make those choices for yourself in tiny, minute ways, yes, you change your internal patterns, but you are going to have to kind of reconcile the way that fits with the world at large. And there is, um, more grace that I think we should give ourselves when we acknowledge the fact that we're not just undoing our own patterns. We are going against a lot of the time societal expectations, deeply ingrained energetic bodies that are beyond us. So the reprogramming, the retraining and the tension and stress and struggle and dynamic around integration to me is like, oh yeah, it makes sense. It's like, perfect. Yeah. This is exactly why this is hard. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Absolutely. No. And I love that example that you gave about, um, about like, you know, your inner child needing to watch movies. It's like, I think that, you know, a lot of people would judge that as like a form of integration. It's like, I think that like our own and judgment, just again, it kind of comes from the mind. It's not like a, it's not like a, a loving concept, but like we judge things and then, yeah, we, we, we're giving our power away to that person that said, oh, that's bad. And it's like, but maybe in that moment, like you said, it is such medicine for you. It is exactly what you needed. And, and so that brings up the, uh, the, the concept of trust, you know, trusting in spirit, trusting in self, um, and 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 how what we can say we're trusting. Oh, okay, I trust. Sure, yeah, trust spirit, trust trust. But it's like you know, like, but are your actions aligning with that? Are you really trusting, or are you, yeah, having that urge to be like, oh, I just need to rest today, but no, I'm gonna push myself and do the other things because you think that's what you need to do instead of really honoring maybe where you're at. And you know, again, there's so many nuances to that even example. Um, but it's it's a uh, if you aren't trusting, you know, you're probably tripping over your own feet and getting in your own way of actually receiving the thing that you need. And uh, that's what's actually keeping you trapped in, in your pattern. It's not the that you didn't do all of the breathwork ceremonies every single day or you didn't go to have that like like hundred plant medicine ceremonies like so and so or, you know, it, it's it's all within you and it's all within your trust. And that also leads to like the collective judgment as well, too, is like we judge people for not viewing some situation the exact same way as us we see that in you know um in what's going on with the wars overseas is like people are condemning other people for not having an opinion and it's like when you really truly trust yourself you can really truly trust that like everybody else has their own path and that like that's going to be laid out to them moment by moment and that just might not be what needs to come up for them right now and so we're each working on our own little piece of the collective and there's a, you know, the trust of internal with that, but also trusting externally that others are doing the same as well too. For sure. I think of that, uh, radical permission, like, uh, goes right hand in hand when we talk about trust for me, because giving myself permission means I give other people permission, right? That, that grace, that permission to be human, to be in error, to be in process. Giving myself permission to be in process is a big thing for me when it comes to integration and understanding that it's like an unraveling. And as we have this conversation, I realized that integration, it, this gets easier the longer you dabble in these energies, these waters, as it were. It gets, it gets easier to listen to yourself and to trust what you hear. Because I can think of very not so long ago, when I would have strong intuitive hits or a big hard no in my body and I wouldn't listen to it because I was not understanding what that meant. I didn't trust my internal voice. I had no true connection to my heart or to what 
guides and anchors me to who I am. I didn't have a true connection to source. That wasn't that many years ago. And like in that place, when you have to take that first leap of faith and choose you and be, and choose to be on your own team and choose to show up for yourself and choose to, um, hear yourself that can look really different in different situations at different places on your journey. But when you choose yourself and you choose to be on your own team, maybe at risk of coming across crazy in a friend group or saying no when everyone else is saying yes, or, you know, starting a project that everyone thinks you're batshit crazy about or et cetera, right? Like those times that you have to go against the grain, it's that it's in those moments, like those small little moments of magic where you choose to center back in and to listen and to just take, like, it's truly a leap of faith. You take that leap of faith, you listen to your internal guidance system and you just make a slightly different choice. Like once you start doing that, I think the universe meets you with momentum and you just kind of just really begins an unraveling process. And I think through my integration journey, through integrating through therapy, breath work, plant medicine ceremonies, you name it, you're integrating all of these new pivots, even reading a self-help book, there's integration involved in taking that information and utilizing it. Through all of those tiny steps, you build a toolkit. And when, when we provide practices or blog posts or podcasts or videos or Instagram posts, what we're doing is giving you options to add to your tool belt. And that's a concept my mom actually introduced me to uh, building my toolkit because I, I move in this world different than you do. So the tools that you need on your tool belt and the tools that I need on my tool belt are very different. And it's a really great, useful analogy uh, especially when we're talking about things like integration and, and using our mind as a tool and using our tools for good or bad or whatever, right? So that's how I've really started to view the spiritual practices I partake in, like journaling. That's a tool in my tool belt. And when I'm moving through a project, something I'm integrating, I have all of these tools at my disposal to try them on and figure out and see if they're going to be what might help me in this situation. And things like silence or space, those things I still consider tools, even though I'm not doing something, to sit into a space of quiet contemplation, to go on a walk in the forest. I'm not utilizing a specific practice or journaling these six journal prompts, but I'm still partaking in something that I have come to be acquainted with as a, as a tool, as something that I can work with, an energy to call upon, or an archetype, or even plant medicines. Those are tool tools in my tool belt that I partake with and use, utilize, and embody, or whatever, while I'm integrating the entireness of my human experience. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, no, I think it's, um, you know, I feel like my tools have become, like, just so, such a part of me, you know, they're so important to me. Um, I hold them so dear. They're so powerful. Um, yeah, so I think, and, and, you know, like you said, everybody needs a different tool belt. I love that analogy. You know, everybody moves through life differently. And so, yeah, if we can, you know, just be curious and just try things and 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 say like, okay, yeah, is this for me? No, okay. You know, I think oftentimes we think like, oh, I have to do the journaling, even though oh, I hate the journaling. It's like, no, like, you know, maybe try something different if that doesn't align with you. Take what resonates and yeah. discard the rest, right? Well, there's that lightheartedness that I think you and I have had at such the forefront of our minds when we were creating once upon a mushroom we want to imbue that childlike wonder that sense of play that curiosity that lightheartedness right we're humans on a journey hurtling through space on a rock and there is no way that you get to just skip the human experience like you're gonna go through things that you need to process that you need to work through right kids learn through play you are going to learn your entire life why not choose to approach those things with the mindset of curiosity and discovery and have that lighthearted energy behind making mistakes? Because that's what it does is like it gives it gives you permission to be human. It gives you permission to be a baby, to not know what you're doing, to be like, I don't know how to use this dang hammer. And maybe I should use a saw. Like maybe my tool's not right. Maybe I look like a complete fool right now because I've never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> The perspective shift is that no one's done this before. No one humans right. There's no right way to human. There's no right way to process your human experience. You're the first you, man. Cut yourself a break while you try and figure out how to use the damn hammer. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love that. And I love that, like, just analogy of just like, this is like, this life is the life for you and everything around you is for you to, you know, discover more of you and evolve into you. And, and um, yeah, that I don't, I don't think there's any concept that I think is more beautiful than that. And it just frees up so much um, bandwidth from giving our power away to other people. It's such an empowering mindset and it's fun. Like you said, it's playful, it's lighthearted. Um, life can be like that. It doesn't have to be this hard thing. And I think sometimes when we look online, it just like, oh, it just seems like another thing we have to do, you know, like spirituality, just another thing we have to do. And it's like, no, like you don't have to do it, first of all, but like you are a spiritual being. So you're doing it already. Um, but engaging with it from a place of love and and and, and fun and play, um, just for me, making that shift in life has been, has made my life just so much more just enjoyable, lovely, mm -hmm. wonderful, you know, and it's, it's like, and it's harder now. Like, I mean, in a lot of ways it's harder because I'm actually facing and, and, and having to be brave and stand up and do things and, and shift things and, and be humble. But it's also like it's so much more beautiful, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, when I came to, when I came to terms with the concept of the fact that like, I can walk through this, figure this out, navigate this and work with this now, or I can put it off and pretend it doesn't exist and the universe is going to slap me upside the face with it again later so you get to choose and you know what sometimes i choose later sometimes i'm like no no back burner that one i'm not going down that road right now <laughs> this is too um, much <laughs> and, you know and it comes back and i go down that road later it's what are your options right like that's how i view it and i know that this is a perspective that's not for everybody but this is really what has served me especially in the last few years of my life is like I can't control what comes up, but I can control who I am and how I move forward in every situation. So if there is a mindset that I can adopt, if there is an archetype that I can call in and embody, if there is a practice that I can utilize that will help me maintain an open heart, curiosity, excitement, that spark for life while I navigate life, I'll do it. <laughs> it's like, this is already hard enough. And I think I just, I got to a point and it was through and in my integration journey, I got to a point where I realized that life is hard enough without me being harder on myself. So I just made a choice to be on my own damn team at some point. Like I need to be on my own team. Why am I making it harder for myself? Life is going to shite kick you all on its own. Like, don't worry. You don't have to make this harder for yourself. Spiritual work, self-discovery spiritual expansion looking at your inner child wounds your your trauma blaming our parents for all the shit they did wrong and didn't do and blah 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 yeah okay there's a time and place for all of that but hanging on to it sitting in it wallowing in it identifying with it that's a big one when we start to identify as people who experienced these traumas i think we just eventually end up losing the point you know why, why absolutely are now what <laughs> like, okay, great. Your dad didn't love you right. Not to take away from that experience, feel that sadness. It sucks. <laughs> I hear you. Like, that's real. But there's a tipping point where you get to utilize some of those tools or you're actively choosing to remain in a specific dynamic or you're stuck or you're, you're circling or you're wallowing or, you know, and <laughs> there's situations in which what I just said doesn't apply, of course, but you get what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's um, the path is a call to take radical responsibility for self. Um, and yeah, like, I think so many of us did have parents, though, that were like, you know, maybe berating us or maybe like spoke, talked down to us. And so it's like, you know, realizing, too, is like, oh, like, that's your foundation. So that might be why you talk to you, yourself that way. But like you said, like that conscious intent that you have to like really like choose like, no, like, I'm going to be on my own team. Like, what a beautiful intention. And I think that also leads mm -hmm. me to that like next piece about integration is like, you know, whatever tool you choose is like the intention behind which you use it is 
is like half of the battle, you know, not that it's a battle, but it's like, it's like, it's a big part of the puzzle. It's really important that we're engaging with things with the right intention and not just going through the motions and really being in the moment and utilizing your journaling because, oh, I, I need some support. I'm, I'm getting support while I process X, Y, Z. So I'm journaling about it, or I'm going to do a plant medicine ceremony with intention to um, gain some clarity uh, in an area of my life. Um, yeah, intention is, is a big piece of that puzzle for me as well. Huge. I think just the switch of knowing that you have attention and intention at your disposal and that they have energetic consequence in your own life is a massive part of what a quote unquote spiritual awakening is. Mm -hmm. Being aware of the fact that I am a person who has intention and inten and attention and the subsequent dynamic or energetic power that goes along with those two things to apply to my life in a daily sense or in a ritualistic manner or through ceremonies. That was, I guess, another unfolding of what integration is, is it's integrating my internal world with my external world now. It's like bringing forward and, and merging this kind of, uh, yeah, but the, the separate categories into one category in my existence is like, okay, I emotionally recognize that this might be a direction I want to move in or that this would be an important thing for me. And this means in my mental realm that I might need to do X, Y, and Z behaviors to align myself with that. And I'd have to physically be able to do this and put myself in this surrounding. And like once all of those little puzzle pieces happen, I set that intention as like that clear why and it brings through it's like one of those, um, this is going to be such maybe an obscure, obscure analogy, but like, you know, those pens that have like multiple colors and you like push them down and you're like, now my pen's pink or blue or whatever. Right. Like it's like every different realm is a different color, but then when it's integrated, I can like push them all down at the same time and they make a nice new color on the page. <laughs> totally. Uh that's cute. I love that. And I think <laughs> it's, it's my intention that puts them together on that page. <laughs> it's that obscure. Absolutely. I don't know if that makes no, sense. <laughs> I, I think, I think, I, I think I get where you're coming from. Absolutely. And yeah, you're right. It's um connecting to that why and, you know, just to do something because someone said to do it probably isn't enough of a, a good enough reason. And it's probably not going to lead to lasting change in your life. So again, like when you're looking to gurus outside of yourself and that's like, that's the only reason why you're doing something, you know, then I, I would strongly recommend looking at your intention. Why usually like the reason why you're looking outside of yourself is because there's some fear there that needs to be felt or processed or, you know, confronted in some way. Maybe there's, you know, you need to step up and be brave and, and uh, start to trust. And, and yeah, like once you, once you do like with that intention and it does start to like come to fruition, like it is like the shift is beautiful and you can really start to see uh, things align in your life. You can really start to, you know, see spirit or you know yourself or your higher self or whatever you whatever you use god whatever showing up to support um whatever you're doing because your intention is is conscious and most of our intentions are unconscious because we're running from fear and that's primal that's a primal thing like you know, we, can't, we can't you know be hard on ourselves because of that but to to rise above that or to find a new way or to to uh, lean in and trust and find a new way that isn't based on fear is yeah that's um that's the work. Mm -hmm. Well, and we can even like do another level there of integrating fear into our existence because we're never going to get rid of fear. Exactly. So it's like, um, I think we've talked about it on the podcast before, but like how you make room in the car for all of the emotions that are coming with you, but you don't let those emotions drive the car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And that's something like I use that mental image so often when I'm in moments of truth, when I'm trying to make a decision, when I'm like moving forward, it's like, who is driving the Melanie car right now? And um, yeah, it's like, it's a big, it's a big thing that gets continuously integrated. Like that is not a one and done dynamic, which I think is the other thing that people find frustrating or confrontational or difficult or sticky about integration is that there is always something coming to light, <laughs> whether you're intentionally engaging in a spiritual path or not. Moving through this world as a human is a spiritual path in and of itself, whether you're aware and engaged or unaware and just making it through. There are energetic things that are occurring and going on and being stirred within you. 
and uh, they will be integrated or they will not, and they will come up and they will look different. And it's like that cyclical nature of our evolution, like that underlying thing. And I, I just think being whatever on a spiritual path is just being aware of those dynamics that are occurring and choosing to bear witness and participate in and contribute to and become a co-creator. And like you said earlier, it's that profound self-responsibility. And with that self-responsibility, like I'll admit that can be terrifying. Like, oh, wow. In a way, this is a, on one level, this is all my fault, but it's also all because of me. And in a way you're very empowered or you could be very uh, you could paint yourself as the villain or the person who's ruined your own life, or you could view it as an opportunity to step up and co-create, um, depending on how you paint that. Both of those things are true. Um, and I think that that radical responsibility is empowering and it's a piece that I think the collective is just tripping over right now. It's like, it's what we're chewing on. It's, uh, I think it's also one of the core things that has caused integration to be sticky for us at large because it's, in order to integrate, like you have to take ownership. You got to you got to admit that there was mistakes. You got to take away the morality of making a mistake. It's not bad or evil, and that leads us down the whole massive conversation about how different religions have had intrinsic influence over our society and our culture. And you're going to go to hell if you do this. And there's sin, and there's good, and there's bad, and all of that. For me, in my journey around integration, got brought to the table and had to get reevaluated. Like my emotions that come up around a situation are not good or bad; they are simply there, and I get to manage and move and work and dissect them. And then, what I do from that point—that's something I'm responsible for, no matter how those emotions got brought up in me. So, absolutely, it's no, a, a continuous. Lot <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It is continuous. Also, I can't even tell you how many times I've thought I've transcended a situation and then like it comes up again. And I used to beat myself up about it and be like, oh, like something's wrong with me. And it's like, you're right. Like it's just there's so many layers. We can't understand it from our like tiny little human perspective. And like just to yeah. be humbled by that. And like I actually tell people that I work with like one on one work. I'm like, expect for it. Expect it's going to come up again. But hey, look, this yeah, time you've done it before. You've shifted it before. You know, you've moved it before. So now you know what to do. Now you have a bit of a roadmap. Now, you know, you're not going in blind. Um, and yeah, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's important to, and there's always to realize that. Get out of it. Oh, yeah, always. And like, I don't know, I used to think like, I used to be like, oh, I'm just so sick of seeing this pattern over and over and over again. I'm ready to never see it again. And then it's like, you know what, I'm now I'm kind of like, then there's a part of me that has a bit of more trepidation for new experience, because I'm like, well, at least I know this experience, I can keep mining this experience for more and more wisdom nuggets, like, maybe like, because it's, it's different than when you have a brand new experience, and you're like, you rip off a brand new wound, or you have some new um crisis point in your life that like is going to be you know that's to me that's that's the piece that like I'm like sometimes I'm like oh I'm a little bit like trepidatious but you posted something the other day that I really liked and it was like you know cur it, courage you need fear to have courage they don't exist by themselves kind of thing something along those lines and I was like yeah that's so true right like, yeah. so you need to lean into that and 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 practice you know being <laughs> courageous practice showing mm -hmm. up and practice um leaning in and even though it feels counterintuitive at times um yeah, courage does not exist without fear. You will never be courageous unless if you are scared. You will never be called to bravery unless if you are scared. That's something that I really play around with a lot in my life because I have a lot of gene keys and specific like astrological placements that let me dilly-dally in some big fear and trepidation and, and um, fear of the unknown, which is a very human thing, but it's something I've I've had to struggle with a lot and play around with the concept of is okay, I am scared. Now what? And so like, okay, uh, I guess this is an opportunity to learn to be courageous, to be brave. And there are incredible human traits, human characteristics and values that are untouchable unless if we move through the darkest of the human experience. Things like Absolutely. honor, things like those, those cidic frequencies, there is trials and tribulations that catalyze us into that direction, I think. And um, that is the analogy of the tree will only grow to heaven if the roots touch hell. You have to just mm -hmm. make space in yourself for the full experience of human life, of all of it, everything on that emotional spectrum, which pff, sounds hella easy when you sit here and cozy little podcast and tell you to go experience your own personal hell. 
Um, <laughs> Shadow not, work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to say that that's easy. Uh, good luck. <laughs> but um, that is like, that's it. And I think instead of, uh, there's a certain point in your like journey of life where that stops being viewed as like the work and it starts being viewed as life that's what life is you go through experiences doing your best mining what you can and trying to put your best foot forward and that's the mindset i've had to adopt and if that's not the way you view the world that's fine because every person is going to have to move through their specific challenges in different ways and i think all of the spiritual tools we work with all of the practices we adopt the mindsets the everything is just humans trying to figure out ways to move through their lives to the best of their ability. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. And I love that. Like, you know, you kind of get to the point, like with what you just said about like just viewing like the work or shadow work or like diving into these places as life and there's no judgment, there's nothing good or bad about it. Cause I feel like that's also something that I think is so innately human is to like, is to try and run from the shadows is to judge them and run away. And then we see this like whole spiritual community. That's just like only love and light. And yes, I do believe like, you know, we, we should be grounded in that place in order to move through our lives if we want to create from that place, but you have to bring the light into the shadows. And so we have to dive in and we have to feel it and we have to experience it and you can't avoid it um it's just avoiding half of who you are um mm -hmm. and so yeah if you're like if you're listening to this and you're stuck in a shadow pattern it doesn't make you any less than some light worker who just only speaks about love and light you know like it, it makes you human and i would say it makes you um in my opinion maybe even more brave than the person who's avoiding diving into their own oh 100 and you can get into like oh i so vehemently agree with that I could go down a very ranty tangent, but um, <laughs> you can get really poetic with it as well as like, there is no light without dark. We are here in the 3D realm, which means we exist on that polarity dynamic. That's what we all signed up to do and experience when we decided to be human. And of course, as always, everybody, there's no right or wrong way to do this. And everyone has their own spiritual path. Some people are here to figure out how to transcend the 3D, move into the 4D, the 5D, and totally just remove themselves from this innately human experience of the polarity of it all. But other people, which where maybe it's not my life path, but it's sure as shit where I am at right now. I'm just trying to figure out how my how best to play with the polarity that I am in. <laughs> And it's a dance between one extreme to the next. It's it's the beauty in the dark. It's the fact that there can be polarity without morality per se innately washed over those experience. Just because it's a denser and it's a more dense emotion or a more dense frequency does not mean that it is a negative end or bad one. It might be less comfortable for you to experience, but when we realize that you can sit in shadow without being in pain, without being in struggle, without being brought into that fear frequency, that's when you have that opportunity to look around and embody that frequency of love, i.e. light. And then it pivots and rises and changes and alchemizes the energetics you're in. Not by condemning and saying that this is bad, but by saying like, this is where I'm at. And it's only kind of in that moment that you get to then shift or pivot it. But taking away that morality, good or bad aspect to the energetics that we're experiencing has been such a subtle thing that I have integrated and I'm continuously integrating into my way of moving in this world, but has been really powerful. And be it, it just takes away that I need to avoid these types of experiences. It's like, nope, I'm just going to move through the experience as neutrally minded as possible. Do I want to be here? Maybe not, <laughs> but it's where I'm at. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think as far as like integration goes as well too, I think, you know, drawing on some of my past experiences is of like what it is and what it looks like. We've kind of like touched on the fact that like, it can look like whatever it doesn't have, you know, there's no one way to make this look, even though we, you know, we try to explain it and communicate it online as in there's some how to's and things, you know, for me, I have, I have some journeys that I just like, haven't even touched on integrating. Like I, I had remember just this one really dark journey that I had and I went to a very hellish place. And that was my journey. I was like in this place and it was like surrendering deeply to this state. And I came out of it feeling like I just had my, like the shit kicked out of me. I was like, what the fuck just happened? Like what just happened to me? And to this day, I have, you know, there's nothing I have, I've not been able to integrate. I've no, I've no idea about it. Maybe I just needed to experience it. 
Um, but yeah, like that was, that would have ex happened like six years ago. So, I mean, like, you know, be gentle with yourself. I think if you are integrating or, you know, working on integration is like, there is no timeline. There is no, like, you need to integrate this tomorrow or whatever. It's, you know, a deep trust that like, I trust that when the time is right, if I meant to integrate that, it will come full circle and I will be able to work with it again. Um, I wasn't able to at that time for whatever reason, maybe it was just the, the place I was at in my journey and that you can trust in that divine timing and um, and not not beat yourself up or try and push or try and uh, dissect or spend too much time maybe where it doesn't feel um, relevant right now. And so like for me, like I had other areas of my life that needed my attention and that felt more like it needed more focus. And um, yeah, just, I trust that. So that's also a piece of the puzzle. I don't know if you have any stories like that as well too. Well, I think that speaks a lot to the fact that sometimes things are being integrated or processed or shifts and pivots have occurred and they are beyond our mental realm, right? Like mm -hmm. just because we don't necessarily have a clear cognitive understanding of our takeaways with a list, uh, like a list of five bullet points that we got and gained and pivoted from a ceremony doesn't mean that like maybe some massive energetic body got shifted and pivoted and, and you had no mental awareness of it. Maybe there was some karmic cycle that needed its final little oomph there, you know, like it's just, that's the trust piece. Like there are sometimes aspects that are beyond our conscious understanding. Absolutely. And I think like, you'll hear people talk about, I don't know how I feel about this. So I'm going to try not to sound too judgy, but you'll see, you'll hear people talk about um, things like ascension symptoms mm -hmm. about how things are going on, on different realms in their life or they're processing or they're integrating knowledge or wisdom or shifts and pivots in the astral planes and in, in their and their higher energetic bodies and then they're only able to notice the physical exhaustion or the runny nose or the physical manifestations of those pivots and while i'm not so sure about the entire ascension symptom dynamic maybe that's real haven't looked into it um i have no doubt that there has been weeks where i have been like gone to a ceremony, come home and I'm just bloody exhausted. I have no doubt that there are things that are shifting and falling into place and, and doing what they got to do that I am not cognitively clear on, which mm -hmm. can be really challenging as someone like I heavily rely on my mind when it comes to a lot of stuff. And uh, that's one of my big learnings, unravelings right now is to just trust and why I, I specifically talked about giving myself space to do nothing is for those types of experiences. Because I think I have a, I was so many, <laughs> just trying not to drop the F-bomb. I have a buttload of those experiences. Um, not all from plant medicine uh, ceremony per se, like ayahuasca level, but I think cannabis can do that to a lot of people mm -hmm. in really subtle ways without them realizing you partake in cannabis, you're really nonchalant, you don't have a clear intention or something. And all of a sudden, like you're having a real bad trip <laughs> or you're really full of anxiety or your body feels like it's buzzing out of control because you haven't been in your body for the last four weeks, but you're so disconnected that you haven't realized you haven't been in your body for the last four weeks. And then you're slammed back into your body. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think it happens to me in subtle ways where I missed I mentally missed the point and I am just in hindsight picking up the pieces being like, oh, I, something didn't click there. And now I'm seeing the physical manifestation or the emotional uh, lingering or aftermath of a dynamic that occurred. I think that that is where I have to pull in on that trust card and be like, okay, do some breathing, give myself space, allow it to shift, allow something to come through if it's meant to, if it's not. But I think that's a lot of the examples I can think of in my life and in a, a lot of my friends and other people's <laughs> lives, especially with cannabis as a medicine. Um, she can do that. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I love what you said about like ascension symptoms too, because I definitely have explored the concept a little bit. And I think like when I've explored it, it's kind of like, like, well, everything's an ascension symptom. Everything, because that's what yeah. we're doing. We're all ascending. So, and it's like, it's, you know, you can Living. be like, oh, it, I'm dehydrated. That's why that happened. It's like, oh, but like also you're dehydrated because you haven't learned to nurture yourself in the moment. So this this headache you're having is a symptom of your ascension to like to fuel you forward on your ascension, ascension journey. So it's like, you know, you can yeah. that 
seems so basic, but like, I mean, you can really argue that anything is an ascension symptom. Um, 100%. Yeah. We talk about that in the course, like in our, in our ceremony, how to prepare for plant medicine ceremony course that Alchemia is releasing shortly here. We talk about how you eventually get to a point where you can divine from the steam of your cup of coffee in the morning like everything becomes a message from the universe because you are constantly mm -hmm. in co-creation with the universe everything is communicating to you all of the time and it is all benevolently geared towards your evolution and your ascension so when you choose to participate and show up in the world reading those energies asking to be guided it is all there with so much divine support that whatever it's really up to you and whatever level you're willing to show up and engage with the world around you is which is overwhelming mm -hmm. to absolutely. say the least. <laughs> absolutely. No, it's, 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 um, I think in my life more and more, I've been in that state that you're speaking about and it's so magical and it's so great, but I'm not at a, I'm not at a state where like I'm able to hold my attention there all of the time. Like it, it doesn't feel right. So it's like, you know, like I definitely have to more disconnect at times and, and, and be, less in that state and be more into a relaxed state and that has to do with me I think honoring my body and my nervous system and what needs what is coming up and uh but yeah it is like that's i feel like that's what people are seeking in life is they want that like that connection to source to remember that like oh they are source and it's all within them and they can be co-creating and they can be uh in the magic and so yeah you know it's funny like we tried to try to define what integration is at the beginning of this and it's kind of like you know like what isn't integration really you know like it's 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 all of these things and and um that's exactly it yeah and like integration is you moving through your life and living your life yeah. and whether you can intentionally participate with an act of doing something that will result in integration or not you are going to be moving through your life in relationship with the universe around you there's going to be cause and effect you are having a ripple dynamic constant communion with all that is like if you don't get it from that ceremony you're gonna get it later like there is a an intelligence that is beyond you that is orchestrating in my belief orchestrating the ascension orchestrating your evolution your growth your life you and you can choose to show up and be a part of it to the degree that you can at any given time and whatever degree that you can do that too is great it's exactly where you're supposed to be <laughs> absolutely um, and, and who gets things on the first try ever do you know what i mean like that rarely ever happens so it's like you know like you oh, know, man. just trust that you know you're gonna have multiple opportunities to try and try and try again <laughs> that's that cosmic joke where i find you and i often sit in frequently where it's like man i've got a thing for pain i guess like <laughs> just gonna sit here and be a little masochist for a while like harder universe harder yeah. i didn't I'm get still it not getting it. <laughs> yeah. yeah try slapping it the other side turn the other cheek <laughs> yeah uh, absolutely. i think too um like on on okay to respect the mental realm like there are things that i turn to more consistently for integration when you come home from a ceremony what's something that you really try to do like what's something that's like become a big part of your grounding practice or your rehoming after well, we, traversing yeah. the universe yeah well we have like a beautiful tools that we like we teach and we've learned in ceremony and so for me engaging with those tools uh partially because i've used them in ceremony so there's a relationship there um like mm. mapacho um with my pipe or with a cigarette uh it's like a peruvian tobacco for those who aren't familiar it's wild uh tobacco you're not inhaling it you're just blowing it kind of more like a sage smoke um or palo santo you're kind of using it more that way but i find that ritual of, of going in and connecting with the plants to be really beneficial um i do a lot of flower baths actually i don't know if that's like maybe just unique to me but i find um the adorable. act of being in, in warm water with like flowers and the essence of the flowers around me that creates the environment that feels um, sacred for me to drop back into that present moment and sometimes even drop back into a bit of a ceremony space um, where I'm able to kind of revisit some of the, the concepts or the feelings or what was coming up and, you know, again, make different like kind of get different connections and click um so yeah i find that that's those are two of my top ones and space like you said just creating that space um and just honoring that like 
you know, sometimes like after ceremony, I will sleep for like a week. And, you know, sometimes after yeah. ceremony, I will eat things that I don't, I maybe shouldn't have eaten. <laughs> like, you know, like from the, from this perspective of like what we should do. And, um, but you know, like I also like really needed that thing because my body was feeling maybe undernourished because I, you know, was maybe on the land for a bit too long and, and fasting a bit too long. And mm -hmm. that's just, you know, the toll in the body, especially like being in a, in a, in a role of facilitation or a role of holding space, I think that can happen. Um, but yeah, I I feel like each and every time that I've come from ceremony, you know, there's been different things. Journaling, I think is a big one. I laugh though sometimes, you know, like I try to write down what came up in my ceremonies to try and remember oh. later. And I'm such a point form person. I'm like, yeah, like unconditional love, exclamation point that is my journey. <laughs> and then I come back to it later and I'm like, Really, Alana? Like, a little more signpost, everything, please. <laughs> yeah. Everything is just love. Did you know? We're all one. Guys, that's it. <laughs> like, profound statements that are just like, you know, like, cool, that's not helping me get back to that that rem that remembering or right. that bit of wisdom. One, but... of my, one of mine once was like, I think I just bullet point, I dissolved. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the next, the next bullet point is was like, yeah, I'm not even anything. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it's in the moment, right? But afterward, you're like, what? <laughs> oh, so yeah, funny. I'm still, I think I'm still mastering that art of like, what is potent to to uh, write down and, and not write down? And, and uh, yeah, you know, also like, I think my main plant teacher, I mean, it's hard to say, I have to pick a main one, but I have many, but it would be Get grandmother careful, medicine. Piss somebody off. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it would be probably ayahuasca. And uh, with ayahuasca, we have the ikeros, which are the the songs yeah. that are sung by the shamans that allow us to uh, that allow the medicine to come in. And so they say mm. that the the medicine's actually traveling on the ikeros. It's not the actual drink that you're taking. Uh, that is the bridge that allows your body to open to it. But it's the the medicine comes on these ikeros, and you can see them in the shipibo. Mm -hmm. You know the little the designs that they have on all, everything. That's actually the ikeros. And so yeah, re going back and listening to those or singing those again. Um, can anchor you into that higher vibration and asking the plants for support, asking, you know, your spirit guides and, and using those intentions, like you said, to intend to do something. There's so much beauty and purity behind intention that just is like, you know, asking you shall receive and, and um, you're being oh, yeah. supported. And um, I think a lot of us don't feel like we matter due to some religious trauma in the past or, you know, uh, parental trauma or whatever it is. And, and the reality is, is like your life is all about you and you can't not matter. It's it's, it's literally mm -hmm. all about you. Um, and I don't mean that in like a narcissistic way that nobody else matters either. But like, it's just like you like, you, you know, I love your car analogy. You are the driver of your own car. This is your turn as a spiritual being, having a physical experience to explore the world around you and uh, and to get to know yourself and to evolve through Um and I think when you start viewing the world that way, it can kind of piss people off that are used to you being codependent or, you know, abandoning yourself for them. But it's, it's mm -hmm. also makes for a more fulfilling life and you'll call in people that are more in more alignment um, with that same ideology, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is um, definitely just so subtly different every time. Mm -hmm. I think, um, for me, something that I consistently have to prioritize when I'm like relanding in my life is I, I, I so intentionally guard my mind mm -hmm. because I don't think as I live in the middle of nowhere and I've been here since I was 11, like my mom moved us out into the forest. So I already have a decrease of input. I do not know if I could function downtown Vancouver, but, um, I really, limit the information the music the tv the social media right after ceremony and like after i land back into my life i'm still just trying to give myself enough space for that whatever is processing through me for that geyser of water from my emotional and my spiritual realms to come through so that i can hang on to those things so i try so hard really intentional like probably for at least a week like i won't go back on social media i'll talk to like maybe of like the five people that are like my partner or my good friend, or, you know, if I can give myself time off of work, I'll take that time off of work after ceremony, as opposed to before ceremony. Like if I have only a couple of days that I get to play with, 
I try really hard to be alone as much as I can with myself to make room for whatever is coming up and coming through me and those downloads and those shifts and those pivots. And then I just do my best to journal that down. But I, I so intentionally guard my mental realm because I know that that's one of my weakest areas. Like I know that I can take on other people's thoughts really quick. Other people's like, I can hang on to other stuff. I can distract myself. I see that weakness or that tendency in myself. So I'm really intentional, especially after ceremony to protect my mental space. And then I think after that, I'm a super sensual person. So when it comes to grounding in knowledge or information, I'll often bring specific oil blends into ceremony. So like when I go through my journey or whatever, that smell in my mind is now associated with that frequency and smell is something that can really anchor people quick back into an emotional state or into a memory. So I'll work super intentionally with my senses. I'll have specific oils that bring in and ground me back into those frequencies and those energies. So in those weeks after ceremony, I'll rub, I'll rub that on my hands whenever I'm sitting down. I like that you brought up the Icaros because <laughs> those are so powerful uh, for a few reasons, but because it's auditory for me, it's, it covers my hearing sense. And it's like vibrational. Like when you're singing them, you feel them throughout your body. And they're actually very powerful for me that I actually can't, uh, often I haven't been able to sing them without being very nauseous, <laughs> um, or having like huge on, like I, my whole body's hot and I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm ready for this right now, but, um, singing the echoes <laughs> is really incredible. And I think, um, again, with the senses, like specific scarfs that I'll bring into space. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I think, probably a symbolic magic witchcraft thing that I do, where I'll bring specific tools or specific necklaces. And now this necklace holds this intention. So whenever I wear this intention, I'm anchoring in this frequency from ceremony. And I create these small grounding ritualistic practices that extend the energetic state from my ceremony. And I think that's really a part of my integration process is, is it's like, okay, little tethers, like anchoring it into my everyday life. Um, that oil for every day, every morning, part of my ritual when I'm journaling is smell the oil, write things down, smell the oil, write things down. Um, Mapacha, the tools that we give people when we host ceremonies become such a pillar of like getting to my normal. They just become like, in a way, sometimes I, I over depend on them. I'm like, nope, I got to do this. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I use a lot of tools. I use a lot of plant allies like all of my oils are infused with plants and yeah. i guard my mental realm like my life depends on it no that's <laughs> a good point i love the like i love the totems or the tethers like you said i feel like i i like you will use crystals and necklaces and and yeah the tools and ceremony i love that you use the oils that's a great one um i feel like agua de florida kind of does it for me but i almost use it so frequently mm -hmm. it almost kind of loses its specific meaning i think towards a specific ceremony per se but yeah, no, those are really good things to consider when you're, you know, preparing for ceremony is like, what can you, how can you make it up? Oh, how can you go back? How can you make yourself revisit it with using these tethers? How can you um, continue to work with it after the fact, right? Mm -hmm. I think the last piece I think that is really important for me for, um, for integration would probably be like the community piece. Um, and maybe that even speaks to a little bit about, you know, you isolate yourself because, you know, we can be really like uh, sensitive to energetic opinions and to thought patterns and taking on other people's stuff. But to have a, a group of people, like maybe even the group that you sat for ceremony with to keep in touch, to be able to um, let somebody know when, hey, like I am in my cave and I'm struggling right now and I need some support. Uh, because, you know, if you go to somebody who doesn't understand this work or what what we're talking about, they can almost like anchor you into that fear or you can take on their fear because they're afraid for you because they don't understand how plant medicine works. So they don't understand how um, this deep trust piece or where you're at. So, yeah, I think that's also a really big piece is have, <laughs> having that safe space to have sound to be have a sounding board and be heard and be received uh, with love and compassion uh, just for where you're at. Um I'm just yeah. imagining those poor friends out there who are oh, like, gosh. oh, great. <laughs> my friend went out, communed with plant spirit, and now she's psycho. And <laughs> so much love for those people who are just sitting there trying to hold space, but looking at their friends like, oh, great, you're crazy. You went crazy. 
Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. And it happens, right? Like we hear about it. I think about it. Like people who don't, mm-hmm. people who like when I first started working with it, people that didn't know that I engaged and utilized it as a tool, you know, people would say things like that. And I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, you know, like I, I, I know that it's, you know, their limited view of, of the unknown. Well, for me, I started saying like, what, you don't think I'm crazy now? Like you don't know me very well. <laughs> like, if you heard half the things that are going on in my brain, the least of your concerns would be the plant I'm drinking in a forest. <laughs> this this is like that could be true for everybody. If if we said yeah. all the things we were thinking, right? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. But um, no, that's a good that's a good point, and I think too it it again it gives people that perspective of like you're not alone. And more often than not, stuff does feel like it's becoming radically worse (laughs) before it becomes better. Like, that is why you and I talk about this unraveling. You are dropping the layers of programming, patterning, and conditioning that have kept you safe for centuries. (laughs) You know, like, this is what has created the egotistical idealization of Melanie and the way she has moved into the world, so many of these structures are not even me. And when they dissolve, that feels like you're dying. There's an ego death Mm -hmm. that occurs because you have so identified with this fictitious personality that you've presented out there. But when that dies, a piece of you is dying. And that is terrifying. And I think for people who don't have that perspective or haven't played around with those realms and letting different parts of them fall away, it can be really hard to have people receive you like you're going insane. <laughs> um, but I mean, if the other side of that is like, I get why people might think that. And I guess in a way you are, you're losing your mind because your mind is what anchors you in that construct. And when you lose your mind, what's left? <laughs> That's a concept a lot of people don't play around with until they're in some type of spiritual path like this. Um, the other piece I wanted to say, though, is that acknowledging that it it often can feel like things are getting worse. Like it's like, oh, I don't feel like I feel better right now. My life feels harder. And when you have a community of people who can listen to you about that, you will then realize that that is part of the process and you are not doing it wrong. I think having that feedback loop, right, of a community of people who are working through similar dynamics, it's like everyone's sad when they go home from a ceremony. It's hard to reenter a world that you were a part of before and now you're different and everything else is the same like there are similar things that come up for people when we reintegrate back into our lives and to have a group of people who are a going through that at the same time as you and b were most likely or probably part of the ceremony where they got to witness you unravel in the first place i think that's why it was such an important part for us when we created once upon a mushroom return of the inner child which is our retreat that's coming up shortly here Um, when we created that retreat, we have written into the entire itinerary integration practices and entire follow-up calls after the retreat's done for the group to get back together. Like that's a big part of what we offer with Alchemia is a focus on that community and that connection because no one's going to be able to do any of this for you, but it's sure as shit a lot easier when you can do it alongside someone else who knows what you're going through or who has an idea or a similar experience. Absolutely. And that like comes back to like, I think one of our biggest mottos here at Alchemy is that like, you know, we're not your guru, you know, like we're just journeying alongside you. And, and it's, it feels so patronizing when you're in a group with somebody who's like telling you that what you're doing wrong or what you need to do better. But like when you're in a group of people that like, are just like on the same level as you, we're getting our hands dirty, we have our like, you know, we're, we're doing the work that can feel so much more nourishing. And um, I think there are a lot of community groups out there where there are people that are kind of like, you know, telling you what to do, telling you how to do your life. And, 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 and you're not just being received or, um, or allowed to just say what you need to say and have it land somewhere, you know, like, I think that's like the subtleness of the healing. It's not like, I need help. I need somebody to tell me what to do. And I, I mean, it, that does happen sometimes, but like to be reminded again, like, oh no, like you're fine. You're safe. This is the process. Just trust, just trust and come back I mean, to the heart. Yeah. And the answer usually is there's nothing to do. Just be, man. Stop trying to do shit. That's usually the answer. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Stop pretending like you have anything figured out. It's the first step. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's the most beautiful part and why I like doing, why I personally like partaking in the journey that I'm on, why I love sitting and holding space in groups is like, it's, so human all the pretenses are dropped nobody knows what's going on and i like i will go to my grave with that people who you think have it together do not 
They don't. <laughs> I do not. I think that's why um, we have a really casual approach with alchemy. Is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no one just gets to a point where they're not going through this human dynamic anymore. No one gets to just transcend all negative emotions and never experience them. It's like, yeah, no, those feelings come up. How they experience them might have changed over the years, <laughs> but uh, everyone, everyone on this planet, is still, still doing the human dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, if you if you ask any spiritual master, that's what they say. They're like, well, like, what do you do with all the all the negative thoughts? No, oh, they're still there. I just don't think them. I, I just feel them. I just don't. <laughs> yeah, I just I just don't give them as much attention. You know, like they just they just travel alongside me, and and they're there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I it's think funny that's important I used to remember. To, I used to hate that. I mean, I still, I still, if I'm in the wrong mindset and someone says that to me, like, oh, just look at your thoughts. Like they're clouds going by. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, yeah, F that cloud. I don't like that cloud. <laughs> like, I don't want it there. <laughs> it go away. Stupid cloud. <laughs> oh my gosh. That reminds oh, me of you my You don't have that my... cloud. You don't have that cloud. Yeah. That reminds me of my three-year-old <laughs> nephew. Just like, just like, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I think I about that all of the time while parenting, like watching people parent. I'm like, I don't know how, like, it, that is such a journey, such a ceremony being a parent. Cause I would sit there and be like, I also want ice cream at 10 o'clock at night. I get it. Why, why can't you have ice cream? Well, uh, it's, well, it's not good for you. I was like, yeah, but you crush ice cream. I'm like, you're right. I do crush ice cream. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, there would be so many moments being called forward, be like, practice what you preach, integrate what you know, follow through. And it's just like, oh, man, I don't know why it rains when you want it to not rain. I get it. Dang rain. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the ultimate spiritual spiritual journey parenting is, I, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I feel like we might not have made the conversation of integration any clearer for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but now they know that everybody's just as lost as they are as we all try and move towards some semblance of whatever we're trying to move towards <laughs> absolutely you're doing it you're integrating it just show up be present yeah find your tools that's it find your community trust yeah and that grace piece like you're not i don't have it figured out alana doesn't have it figured out mm -mm. i mean gandhi gandhi might have had it figured out Jesus Christ, he might have it. He had a lot of stuff figured out. I don't know if he had it all figured out. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if anyone figures it all out. I do know that you just got to do your best. And you got to be nice to yourself while you fall short of your own perceived expectations. That's my biggest piece. Choose to be on your own team. Your life is hard enough. My life is hard enough. And it became exponentially easier, even if it got objectively shittier. It became so much easier when I just chose to give myself the benefit of the doubt be on my own team and walk through whatever I'm moving through on my own side because it's hard enough. <laughs> well, I think that's probably everything for today. We have quite a few things coming down the pipeline. We've got a sneaky little website that's almost ready to go live. Along with that, we've got an introduction of our first retreat for 2024 that's going to be coming up. And I believe in our next couple of podcasts here we're going to have some of our co-facilitators on we're going to be talking to some other people about inner child work working with medicinal magic mushrooms in a ceremonial capacity the power of nature the power of play some of the pillars and foundations of my personal life alana's personal life as well as alchemy at large so it's exciting we're into the new year now i think this is our first podcast in the new year isn't it Yeah. Boom. 2024. We've arrived. Doing our best. Integrating. <laughs> yeah. We'll fumble blindly in the dark with you. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you all back here very shortly for another Sacred Seat podcast episode.